Welcome back everyone to the video here on the Unknown Code YouTube channel. Today we are taking a look at problem 119, Pascal's Triangle 2. Now this one is going to be very similar to the first one except slightly different. This time around we're going to be given some row index and we want to go ahead and return that actual row of the Pascal's Triangle based on the zero index. So once again, what the Pascal Triangle looks like is it's going to be the sum of the two numbers directly above it like we see here. So the first one's 1, we have 1, 1, and we have 1 plus 1 here is equal to 2, then 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 and 3, then 1 plus 3 is equal to 4, 3 plus 3 is equal to 6, 3 plus 1 is equal to 4, so on and so forth as we go down the array. Let's go ahead and take a look at the examples and compute some things and then go ahead and go back and figure out how we can do this. So for example number 1, we're given the index equal to 3. So the first index is going to be equal to just 1. The second index is going to be equal to 1, 1. The second index is equal to 1, 2, 1. And finally, the third index is equal to 1, 3, 3, 1. So now we'll go ahead and return 1, 3, 3, 1. So that's how the first example breaks down. Let's take a look at the second one. For example 2, we're just given index equal to 0. Again, this one's obviously pretty easy. This is just going to return 1. That's a pretty silly one. Let's take a look at the last example. In the last example, we're given index equal to 1. Still pretty trivial, so index 0 is equal to 1 and index 1 is equal to 1 1 so we return 1 1 just like that let's go ahead and take a look at the constraints and try to figure out how we can solve this as quickly as possible so on this one the only constraint that they give us is 0 is less than or equal to row index is less than or equal to 33 obviously this just means that the greatest number of rows we're going to compute is 33 this also means that once we get down to the 33rd row, these are going to be pretty large numbers. So we might run into some issues with sizes of integers and things like that. So we we'll have to worry about that. It also means that if we're trying to compute all of these at once or over and over again, it might be a little bit slow. So that means that there must be a faster way, which we'll talk about in a second. So once again, the goal of this problem is to generate a given row of a Pascal's triangle at a given index and then return that specific row that the problem was looking for. Like I was saying before, there's two possible ways to solve this problem. The first one includes generating the entire Pascal's triangle all the way up to the row that we're looking for. We've already done this and you can still do it relatively quick and beat a good portion of the runtimes on the platform. However, there's actually a mathematical equation that we can use to calculate any row that we want to find. We can use this equation to quickly calculate all the indexes of the rows we're looking for in a single loop without having to store the entire Pascal's triangle up to that point and then return the specific index. Let's go ahead and take a look at the pseudocode for this problem and the example walkthrough for hopping over to leetcode. Thank you. So for the pseudocode, we're going to start out by saying let result equal a new list. This is where we're going to store the actual row. Then we need to go ahead and add 1 to the index 0 of result. This is because this is obviously our base case. The top one is always going to be equal to 1. Then we want to go ahead and loop from 1 to the row index plus 1. So obviously here, if it's only going to be 0, we're already at 1. We're just going to go and return that list. But if it's anything bigger than 0, we'll start calculating. So now, obviously, we'll calculate the next index of row, and then add that calculated index to the row. And once this loop is over, we'll go ahead and return that result list. So this is a little bit cryptic, so let's go ahead and dive into our example so we can figure out what this mythical calculation is. So our example again, we'll once again be looking for index equal to 3. So like I said, we'll go ahead and start out with a list equal to an empty list. The last for the loop will be equal to index plus 1, which is equal to 4, obviously. And the current value will be equal to 1. Now we want to set index 0 of the list to the current value, which is equal to 1. So now our list is equal to 1. Our last is still equal to 4. Our value is still equal to 1, obviously. Now we start our loop for i equal 1. Our list is equal to 1. Our last is still equal to 4. Value is always still equal to 1. We want to recalculate our value. So value will be equal to value times last minus i. So this is going to be equal to 1 times 4 minus 1 which is equal to three. And if you go back and look, the second index, or I guess the first index of the third row is definitely equal to three. So now we still need a little bit of calculation. So now we're gonna say val equal to val divided by i, which is going to be equal to three divided by one. So now we have our val, so we're gonna go and add value to list. So now i equal to two. Our list is now equal to one, three. Our last is still equal to four, obviously. And our val is equal to three. Once again, we go ahead and calculate val. So val is equal to val times last minus i. This is going to be equal to 3 times 4 minus 2, which is equal to 3 times 2. But we also need to say val is equal to val divided by i. This is going to be 6 divided by 2, which is equal to 3. Now we go ahead and add value to list again. 
for i equal to 3, our list is equal to 1, 3, 3, our last is equal to 4, and our val is equal to 3. Once again, val is equal to val times last minus i. So this is equal to 3 times 4 minus 3, which is equal to 3 times 1, which is obviously 3. Now we need our val equal to val divided by i, which is equal to 3 divided by 3, which is equal to 1. We add the value to list. Now i equal to 4. Our list is equal to 1, 3, 3, 1. And our last is equal to 4. Our val is equal to 1. Now i is not smaller than last. This means that the loop ends. And we go ahead and return that list we created. So it's as simple as that. That one single calculation can literally determine any single row that we want. Let's go ahead and hop over to LeetCode and take a look at how we code this. Here in LeetCode, we're going to go ahead and start out with our new result array list. So list integer result is equal to a new array list. Obviously, we need this so we can actually go ahead and store the entire row. And we need a long previous equal to 1. Like I was saying earlier, this could be a pretty large number, so we want to make sure we have enough space to actually store this. We're going to go ahead and say results.add previous as an integer. Again, this is our basically our base case. So no matter what, the first index or zeroth index is always going to be equal to 1. Then we're going to start our for loop for int i equal to 1. i is less than or equal to row index in i plus plus we can say long current is equal to previous times row index minus i plus one divided by i this is basically those two steps that we did previously merged into one then we're going to go ahead and set result i add that current as an int then we need to go ahead and set our previous value equal to the current value so we can go ahead and calculate the next value and we'll loop through until we've gone all the index in that row then we want to go ahead and return result so this one, I feel like I probably typoed this equation somehow. So let's go ahead and give it a spin and see if I typoed anything. Would you look at that? I actually got it right in the first try. That's pretty lucky. But this is a zero millisecond runtime, which would be 100%. The other option, if you do go ahead and create the entire Pascal's triangle, it's like one millisecond. It beats like 50% or 60% or something like that. So this one is really faster. But anyway, as always, if you guys did find some value in this or you just enjoyed, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Everything helps out here in the YouTube journey. And as always, this has been Ethan Uncoder. Hope you all have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.